Resident Evil Village is without a doubt the biggest video game of 2021 so far. As such, there's a lot of information out there. But what about the stuff that matters? How many areas will you get to explore? Is it four or actually five? How is the inventory menu changing from Resident Evil 7? Is it gonna make the game easier or harder? And what will combat be like? These are just a few of the questions I hope to answer in this video. So if you're excited about Capcom's next entry into gaming's biggest horror franchise, then I hope you'll join me as I cover seven big gameplay details about Resident Evil Village. Before we begin, here's a fun fact. As of now, only 6% of my viewers are subscribed. That blows my mind. The next time I publish a preview for, say, Far Cry 6, Ratchet & Clank, or any other big game, 94% of my viewers won't get notified. I don't post videos very often, but when I do, I make sure they're worth your time. So if you like highly researched, highly edited previews just like this one, hit that subscribe button below. And with that out of the way, let's look at Resident Evil Village. Inventory management has always been a big part of Resident Evil, and that's not going to change in Resident Evil Village. But it looks like your inventory isn't quite as limited as before. While medicine, ammo, and weapons will take up slots in your main inventory, just like always, the resources you'll use to craft will not. That means that herbs and chem fluid, which you use to craft medicine, as well as gunpowder and scrap metal, which you use to craft ammo, won't take up precious space. In fact, there's an entirely separate inventory menu for crafting. And you can see here the number of craftable items you have, which again, we don't see in Ethan's main inventory. Now, I'm not sure if Ethan is limited to the number of herbs, gunpowder canisters, or pieces of scrap metal he can carry, but even if he is, you won't have to drop, say, your herbs just because you found some other item that you don't have room for. But that's not the only way inventory management is changing. In Village, key items, for example, items required to solve certain puzzles, also won't take up slots in your main inventory. Just like resources, they're also stored in an entirely separate inventory menu. All in all, Resident Evil Village looks to require inventory management without the inventory micromanagement. A welcome change, if you ask me. As you probably know, Resident Evil Village features a merchant not unlike we saw in Resident Evil 4. This time, his name is the Duke, and I'll cover him in detail in just a few minutes. But for now, the fact that you can buy stuff in Resident Evil Village means you're going to need money, and that means you're gonna have to loot stuff. A lot of stuff. First off, whenever you kill a bad guy, they'll often drop some lay. That's the game's currency. One cool side note about this is, unless the game tricks you, which it most definitely could, the fact that enemies drop lay when they die gives you a way of knowing when an enemy is actually, well, dead. Resident Evil is no stranger to enemies that play dead, and again, they could trick you, but if not, you'll know when an enemy dies for sure when they drop some money. Moving on, you can also loot stuff from loose drawers, like in past games. But unlike Resident Evil 7, you can now shatter vases and break cabinets using your knife to see what's inside. Now, you might find money, but you could also find resources that you can use to craft ammo and medicine. You can also find random treasure that you can later sell to the Duke, and sometimes these treasures will reveal themselves as a glimmer somewhere in the environment that you can shoot down. Or they might be in, say, a birdcage that you have to, again, shoot down. Ultimately, looting money and items is a much bigger part of Village than it was in Resident Evil 7, and in my experience playing the demo, it did make the gameplay more rewarding. But I'd be remiss not to mention that one more thing you can loot in Resident Evil Village is meat. If you've been paying attention to previous coverage, you know that you can shoot fish, pigs, and, uh, these guys. You can then harvest their meat, which you can exchange at the Duke's kitchen for recipes that will permanently upgrade your character. Here we see an upgrade that permanently decreases the damage you take when blocking. 
Again, one of my biggest takeaways from the Resident Evil Village demo is that with everything you can loot in the game, and how you can actually use your loot to improve your chances of survival, exploring felt more rewarding here than it did in previous Resident Evil games. If this isn't the first video you've watched about Resident Evil Village, you've probably seen the game's map. In this image, which Twitter user at MarcosRCRE upscaled from the low-res version Capcom initially revealed, we can see four main areas. There's Castle Dimitrescu, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which is where Lady Dimitrescu hangs out, and then there's House Beneviento, Moreau's Reservoir, and Heisenberg's Factory. And yes, each of these is named after one of the game's main villains, but more on them later. For now, you might be wondering, what about the village? You know, the opening area we saw in the first gameplay demo? Isn't that a part of the game's map? Well, yes, but if you go to Capcom's official Resident Evil Village website, they describe an area called the Settlement. All the associated photos of the settlement actually show this area. So while it's not marked on the map, the settlement is definitely a fifth area of the game, and in an article on the PlayStation blog, it was hinted at that this could act as a hub area leading to the other four areas of the game. Now, this area is not labeled on the map, but we can see one smaller label here that says Louisa's house. We know Louisa is this character here, and that her house is the same house Ethan took refuge in during that first gameplay demo. So this part of the map does show the settlement and it's likely where the game starts. Now, is there an area of the game called The Village? Well, if you notice, this entire map is titled The Village. So it's likely that this term refers to the entire map, which encompasses all the other areas you'll explore throughout the game. Well, at least the areas that we know of. Given that I just highlighted the five main areas of the game, I thought I'd also talk about the five villains. First is Lady Dimitrescu. Basically, all you need to know is she's a nine and a half foot tall vampire with three vampire daughters, and they all feed on the blood of men. As for the daughters, my one encounter with them in the demo was definitely scripted, but it's been confirmed that Lady D will stalk you throughout the halls of the castle in real time. Thankfully, she's pretty slow, but her daughters, yeah, you cannot run from them as easily because they can each transform into a fast-moving swarm of bugs. Now, landing hits with your pistol or shotgun will stun the daughters, giving you a precious few seconds to run, but it won't do any damage. To kill them, I've heard Ethan will apparently have to use special items, and this might take place during one or even several mini-boss fights. But I didn't hear that from Capcom, so definitely don't quote me on that. Anyhow, what about the other four main villains? Well, there's Carl Heisenberg, who you'll meet in Heisenberg's factory. Not only does he wield a huge hammer, but he can apparently use some form of telekinesis. Next is Salvatore Moreau, who resides in Moreau's reservoir. While I can't confirm this, I have read and heard several outlets speculate that Moreau might at some point transform into this sea creature which we can also see on the game's map. But again, take this with a grain of salt, as Capcom hasn't confirmed or even hinted that this is true. At least not that I know of. Next is Donna Beneviento, who you'll meet at, you guessed it, House Beneviento. She's shrouded in a black gown and veil, but what makes her super creepy is that she controls this unsettling puppet all without any strings. Is this puppet a separate entity? Is it alive? I believe that remains to be seen. So those are the four villains associated with the game's separate areas. But as you may know, there's a fifth and main villain of the game, Mother Miranda. We've seen Miranda a number of times in the flesh as well as in some in-game imagery and lore. And without getting into spoiler territory, it's fair to say that she calls the shots in the village. Not only do the residents worship her, but the four other villains do her bidding. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm expecting Mother Miranda's story might draw pretty heavily from the well of Resident Evil lore. So 
So the Duke is a merchant, and as such, he sells stuff you'd expect, like ammo and medicine. But in the demo, he also sells, and subsequently unlocks, full-on weapons, like, say, the shotgun. Assuming this is how things work in the actual game and not just in the demo, that means that unlike Resident Evil 7, you might not need to find the shotgun out in the world before you can use it. Not only that, the merchant also sells the recipes I mentioned earlier that allow you to upgrade your health and craft ammo, assuming you have the right resources. And we're just getting started. The Duke also lets you upgrade your guns in not just one, but two ways. You can buy specific parts to improve a weapon's performance, or you can switch to this menu where you can literally level up your guns. For a price, of course. Here we can see upgrades for your handgun, including power, rate of fire, reload speed, and ammo capacity. Another interesting upgrade you can purchase is extra baggage, which increases the number of items you can carry. Again, this is an upgrade that wasn't available to you in Resident Evil 7 until you found it out in the world. Moving on, the Duke will also buy stuff. This apparently includes your weapons, but he'll also buy items that can only be described as treasure. Here we see an ornate wine glass I found in the castle that I was able to sell for 3,500 lei. I have a feeling that players who really take their time to search the world for valuables will be able to save up quite a bit of lei. This could make conserving ammo and medicine less of an issue, assuming you always have enough coin when you eventually do make it safely back to the Duke. Resident Evil has never been about just killing everything that moves. Ammo and health are way too scarce for that. But what if you want to get tactical to, say, conserve your ammo? Well, Resident Evil 7 didn't have a ton of options other than just fight or flight. But that might change in Resident Evil Village. For example, take the lichens. They typically hunt in packs, but you'll occasionally see one perched alone high up on a rooftop. This presents a strategic choice. Do you sneak past undetected, or do you take him out? Pick him off and yeah, you'll use up some ammo, but doing this repeatedly might thin out packs of lichens you could face later on. You'll also be able to get strategic when it comes to using explosives. Here we see Ethan laying a landmine in a doorway which could work as a great bottleneck if you can eventually lure multiple lichens through at once. And speaking of, here we see Ethan barricading a doorway, a tactic taken straight from Resident Evil 4. Notice the big red barrel? Again, the barricade created a bottleneck and when multiple lichens eventually break through, Ethan is able to shoot the explosive barrel and take out multiple lichens at once. Another thing you might have noticed in the settlement is that you'll occasionally find bags of flour. If you shoot one while an enemy is nearby, it will create a white cloud that will temporarily blind them. One other thing I noticed is that if you're tired of misfiring at enemies that move and wobble sporadically, this happened to me all the time in Resident Evil 7. Well, aim for the legs. A well-placed shot to the lower extremities will apparently immobilize certain opponents so you can then land several easier shots in a row. And if you go up against an opponent with, say, a sword, yes, some enemies will have swords, it looks like you can literally shoot weapons out of their hands. Finally, don't forget to block. This is nothing new, but as stated by the developers, blocking will be crucial if you want to get through tougher combat encounters. There's also this kick, which I think you can perform after successfully blocking an opponent. So it's not hard to figure out that this game is going to be gorgeous. But here's the big question. If you're playing on console, how will the game perform? Well, it depends on which console you're playing on. For PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, you'll be able to play the game in performance mode at 60 frames per second in 4K. Or you can activate graphics mode, which features ray tracing, but drops the frame rate down to 45 frames per second on both consoles. If you have an Xbox Series S, the game should run at 1440p at 45 frames per second in performance mode and 30 frames per second at 1440p in graphics mode, which again does feature ray tracing. 
If you're playing on a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, performance mode will run at 1080p at 60 frames per second, and graphics mode will run in 4K at 30 frames per second, but you won't get ray tracing on last gen consoles. Finally, base PS4s will run the game at 45 frames per second in 900p, while the base Xbox One will run at 30 frames per second in 900p. I played the demo on a PS5, and while I didn't toggle between modes, I'm not sure that that was even an option in the demo, I can say that the game looked fantastic. The level of detail in the castle in particular was breathtaking. So there you have it, that's some of the stuff that I found interesting about Resident Evil Village. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. And if you want more quest mode content, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said at the outset, only 6% of my viewers are subscribed, which is mind-blowing. I know we can do better, so if you'd like to get notified the next time I post a video just like this for some other big game of 2021, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified. I don't post very often, but when I do, I make sure it's worth your while. Lastly, if you want to keep up with me and see what I'm playing, you can follow me on Twitter at QuestModeGames. Until next time, I want to remind everyone to never stop questing.